What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American Politics, back in with a new video. And today it is time we bring back the future of blank series, but in a little bit more of a deep dive into voter groups because we have a difference between states and groups themselves. And I wanted to discuss uh, voting groups themselves because they're very fascinating. There's very specific groups I've always wanted to talk about. And I think it's about time we do talk about them. And today we are going to talk about Hispanics. We're going to talk about the future of Hispanics, where they're trending, all of that. Because very fascinating stuff coming out of the Hispanic population. And there's some misconceptions about Hispanics I want to go over today. Because I'm sick and tired of some of these people saying, Oh, well, you see here, they're actually leftists. Or, you know, they love Latinx. And the shut up. Just shut up. So before I start today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit the little bell, and yes. So, before we talk about how Hispanics are trending, how they're voting now, I wanted to do a little bit of like, a quick, you know, TLDR, what are Hispanics politically, usually? Now, this is a very broad stroke, so be careful, I mean... There's so many subgroups of Hispanics, like there are for, you know, white voters. There's different subgroups. But generally speaking, most Hispanics are culturally more conservative, you know, more religiously conservative, you know. Most of them are Catholic. Most of them are religious-going people. So they're usually more conservative on cultural issues, you know. Abortion, they generally are pro-life. Don't listen to these polls that have... Hispanics, like, 80% pro-choice, that's a bunch of horseshit. Those are the Hispanics you find in San Francisco, you know, those 99% white people that call themselves Hispanic. Those are the type of, you know, pro-choice Hispanics are out there. But, yeah, Hispanics generally more conservative on social issues like abortion, LGBT stuff, etc. But for years, there's been one issue that Hispanics generally weren't conservative on. Guns. For years, they actually were one of the most anti-gun groups in the country. But in recent years, this is a fascinating development the left does not want to talk about. The fastest growing gun ownership group in America is Hispanics. Especially in Texas, Florida, Arizona. Notice why I have those states up? Because these five states are critical for the future of American elections. And Hispanics are becoming more and more pro-gun. A lot of them are realizing, wait, we've been lied to about guns. I mean, a lot of them, that's flat out what's happening. They realize, wait, these, these things are actually fine. Gun ownership is actually good. So that's what's happening on the cultural front. Now, that may seem like Republicans should easily win them, right? I mean, they're culturally conservative, they're becoming more pro-gun. Well, at the same time, they're unique on economics. Now, Again, this is a very broad stroke, I'm about to say, but I would say there's two types of Hispanics on economics. You got the business types, and then you got, like, the, you know, worker types. I know that's kind of a very broad stroke, but here's what I'm saying. You got groups like Cubans, right? They are heavy, 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 heavy business owners. And generally speaking, they're more right economically. Now, not, you know you know, neocon libertarian, right? That, oh, there should be no government at all. But instead, they're more right-wing as in, hey, you know, we're fine with, you know, going against monopolies and stuff, but can you guys please not have regulation for us? That's what I mean by it. They're more right-wing in economics. I mean, they're a bit more right than America is, right? I mean, economically, they're... I hate this argument that, oh, most Americans are, you know, libertarian. No, they're not. They're more, like, centrist. Well, I would say Cubans and Venezuelans, slightly right of the average American econo on economics. And that's why they tr tend to usually vote a bit more Republican than most groups. I mean, Cubans for a couple of years now have, I think, voted majority Republican. So that's why, you know, those groups, they've always been, you know, leaning Republican. At the same time, you got more of the working class type, and these are the unique ones in Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, California, Illinois, I mean, places like even like Colorado. They're more left in economics. Now, there's some of them, especially surprisingly on the Texas border, they're like Bernie bro left on economics. 
I mean, there's a lot of them that are actual socialists, but that's a very small part of the Democrat Party, right? That's that's like the Democrat shills that are like Bernie bro left on economics. They're going to vote Democrat no matter who. And they're more left-wing in economics. You know, they want single-payer, a lot of them. A lot, Well, not necessarily single-payer, but more like universal health care, you know, more government intervention in the economy. And yeah, so generally speaking, they're fairly left, all right, on economics. That's where you see them in Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, etc. Well, in 2020, Trump broke both groups. And in a good way, he made both groups trend significantly Republican. Now, we saw this happen in places like Miami-Dade, Zapata County, you know, Imperial County, California. And just like usual, each county is very, very, very different with its demographics. I mean, Zapata County, like usual, very Hispanic. But guess what? For a hundred years, it never voted Republican once. That's why this was such a huge deal. The Orange Man. One, a county Democrats have had for years, for a literal century, they voted Democrat. Even with Reagan, in 1984, they still voted majority Democrat. And guess what? This is in Southern Texas. This is what I call, you know, the more, you know, center left type of Hispanic voters. You know, very blue collar, very working class. They're the typical former Democrats, all right? This is where you would see a lot of them. That's where they just live in. There's a lot of blue dog dem types. And they've been trending a bit Republican ever since Trump entered office. But what happened in 2020 just blew up everything. Now you got Imperial County. And just like, you know, Miami-Dade, like everything else, you go down here. Where is it? Right here. And once again, it voted the most Republican since Bush. Now... We'll talk about this in a minute, the Bush stuff, because there's some misleading stuff. But essentially, Trump won 36% of the Hispanic vote, or Imperial County vote, which is very Hispanic. Again, this is one of those counties that used to be Republican, but in recent years have trended a bit more Democrat. Then you got Miami-Dade. Just like Imperial County, you know, sometimes it did vote Republican, like in big red wave years. It voted Republican, but it really hasn't gone the way Republicans wanted it. It's been trending Democrat every single year, but then Trump came in, did terrible in 2016, but in 2020, there's a lot of Venezuelans, Cubans, etc. that did not trust Trump in 2016, then loved him. They loved him. Guys, he had the best ad I would consider in political history with the uh, Poor for Trump app. If you don't know what that ad is, go look it up. It's gold. So that's why Trump won, the, well, that's the reason why he won the state of Florida, not he didn't win it, but at this point, Miami-Dade, Democrats have realized it's over, this was their last hurrah, it's starting to trend Republicans significantly, and yeah, so, now the question is this, people always talk about, well, you see here, you go back to 2008, 2004, McCain got 31% of the vote with Hispanics, 2020, Trump got 32%. Shut up. <laughs> Just shut up. This is an argument I hear all the time that, oh, McCain and Bush actually won more of the Hispanic vote. Wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. So, exit polls in 2008, 2012, 2016, 2020 stunk. So, did McCain probably win like 29% of the Hispanic vote? Yeah, he probably did. That's factually true. In 2012, McCain probably, or I should say uh, Romney, only won like 27-26% of the Hispanic vote. That is true too. 2016, it claims Trump only got 28%. It's going to be closer to 30 but that's not that far off. Still better than Romney. Then 2020 happened. They claim he only got 32%. Horse shit. Absolutely horse shit. Want to know why? Zapata County. He did better than Bush here by 10 points. So you're telling me that Bush won 45% of the Hispanic vote, but Trump only won 33%? That's horseshit. Absolute garbage push by these neocons that want mass immigration. It's horseshit. That did not happen. What happened was in 2004, guess what? 
Bush was a very popular governor of Texas before 2000. That's why he was able to do significantly better in the state of Texas, right? Especially in the southern part. But guess what? He didn't come close to winning it. None of these counties he came close to winning. And as for Imperial County, here's the thing, though. Go up here. Let's just go up here to the census data. So back in right here, 72% of the population were Hispanic or Latino back in 2000. In 2010, it was 80% of a full 8 percentage points. If it was 2020 data, it would probably be closer to 83, 84%. So you understand why Bush, quote unquote, did better in the county? Because it was significantly more favorable to him. It was significantly more white, non-Hispanic. If Trump had the demographics of 2004, he would have won Imperial County. May sound nuts, but go look at the precinct data. It's just a fact. And as for Miami-Dade, take a guess. Same deal. You go up here and look at this. Right here. 49% in 2000 were white Hispanic, right? And I believe there's one number here. Yeah, right here, 57% of the population were Hispanic total. Well, let's go up here. Hispanic or Latino, 65%. Yeah, basically an eight-point increase. Once again, you take into account Bush won or lost his county by around, you know, six points. Trump lost by around seven. Take into demographic changes. Trump did better. Guys, Trumpism has made Hispanics more and more Republican. Right, not the other way around. Bushism got carried because they ran against shitty candidates, ran against just dumb candidates, in fact. And the fact of the matter is, demographics back then were significantly more favorable to the Republicans. Now, this is my issue though. This doesn't mean we should like shill just for Hispanics. I have a better proposal. How about we, you know, work for getting all working class voters in this country to vote Republican? You know, middle class whites, middle class Hispanics, business uh, Hispanics, business whites, working class Asians, all of that. There should be a platform Republicans work on that do all of this. And by the way, to prove my point, here we go. Minimum wage increase, 61% in Florida said this. You know, a majority Hispanic, I think borderline actually, very Hispanic state, not, nonetheless, voted for a huge increase in minimum wage. They don't, they're not against stuff like this. They're just against what Democrats and globalists want. Like, oh, we're going to destroy your small business, but let the big businesses stay open 24-7. That's what they're against. Now, you have some Hispanics, like in Southern Texas, some parts of California, that are significantly more left-wing. You're not going to appeal to those voters. Appeal to these types. The voters are like, hey, let's, you know, work on some policies that actually benefit the average working American. So that's the video of today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit the little bell. And yes, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Godspeed to all of you.